Greetings, beloved. Welcome back. I'm Chelsea. Beloved, how's it going? Are you still letting go and letting God? Well, I pray so. I pray it's all going well. I pray that you have started that first part of the process and letting go and letting God take control in whatever your situation is, whatever decision you're facing, identifying that you must submit it to God. You must release it to God because really he's the only one who can help you to get to a place where things are the way that he desires for them to be for your best possible outcome. Well, today, beloved, I want to continue with that series. We talked last week about letting go and letting God by truly surrendering, making the conscious decision to say, here you go, God. I'm going to let you take the reins. I'm going to let you take the wheel and let you drive the process. So that means I'm going to release it all to you. You're the driver and I'm the passenger. You've got to make that conscious decision first, trusting and knowing that God is able and that God is willing and that God will help you, that God will direct your path to get you to where he wants you to be, which is the best possible place for you. He knows what's best for you. All right, beloved. So today I want to continue with part two of letting go and letting God. You see, once you make that conscious decision to give it over to God, that's not where it ends. Even though you've made a decision to give it over to God, you could still be feeling anguish inside of you over whatever the situation was, whatever you're currently facing. You could still have feelings of sorrow. You could still have feelings of regret, remorse. You could be going through a process that's really a grieving process, even though you may not have identified it as grieving. You could be grieving the loss of a job. I sense that there's someone watching me who you actually were recently promoted and still laid off from a job. So you're thinking about how good things were. Number one, you're in disbelief because you can't believe it happened. Number two, you're thinking about how good things were. You're thinking about that salary that you had. You're thinking about that great office that you had. You're thinking about just what the job and the promotion was going to do for you. Because in reality, almost everything was great about that job. So you're grieving it and, and that's natural. Someone may be angry about a situation. Someone may be confused about a situation. Someone may be just so sad. When you let go and let God, you give it to him, but you also have to give what you're feeling to him. I want to talk about that today in part two of letting go and letting God entitled releasing it to God, pouring it out to God. Just because you give it to God doesn't mean you don't still feel what you feel in here. It doesn't mean that you don't still think what you're thinking in here. It doesn't mean that you don't still have some ideas about something, some desires about something. So the next step in letting go and letting God is to surrender by pouring it all out to God. Today, I want us to take a look at the book of Samuel. We are going to be reading from the New Living Translation about Hannah. Most of you, if not all of you, know the story about Hannah. She was a woman in the Bible who was married to, I believe, a fairly nice man who loved her. But apparently, he didn't love her enough to only have her as his one and only wife. Hannah was a woman who was married to this gentleman by the name of Elkanah. He, or Aunt Hannah, was barren, so she could not have children. As if that is not bad enough for a woman who really, really desires to have children. She also had a rival wife. Elkanah had another wife by the name of Penina. So Penina, she was very fertile. She was able to bear fruit and multiply. So she gave their husband, Elkanah, children, where Hannah could not give Elkanah children. She was barren. Even though the Bible says that Elkanah loved Hannah so much that when it was time for the offering, he gave her a double portion to offer, that still was not enough for her. As I, was, I would imagine, that would not be enough for any woman who desires, like she just knows, she just knows 
that she's supposed to be a mother. Well, I want us to take a look at Hannah's story here today as we continue in part two of letting go and letting God and pouring it out to God. I'm reading today from 1 Samuel 1, starting at verse 9, and we are going to take this all the way down to verse 18. The word of God is this to you today, beloved. Once after a sacrificial meal at Shiloh, Hannah got up and went to pray. Eli the priest was sitting at his customary place beside the entrance of the tabernacle. Let's stop there for just one moment. The Bible says here that Hannah got up and she went to pray. When you go to give it to God, you go and you get in his presence. You go to meet with God, which is exactly what Hannah did. And listen up to what she does next. It says this in verse 10. Hannah was in deep anguish, crying bitterly as she prayed to the Lord. So she was in such an anguish that she was crying as she prayed to God. Have you ever been in that predicament, beloved, where something just hurt you so badly, where something just had you in knots to the point where as you spoke, the tears came out. As you spoke, your body just locked up because there was that much pressure and tension because you're just in this deep anguish. Have you ever been there? Maybe you're there right now. Let's continue listening here. It says, Hannah was in deep anguish, crying bitterly as she prayed to the Lord. And she made this vow, O Lord of heaven's armies, if you will look upon my sorrow and answer my prayer and give me a son, then I will give him back to you. He will be yours for the for his entire lifetime. And as a sign that he has been dedicated to the Lord, his hair will never be cut. So she goes on to pray as she's praying out to the Lord. She tells him what she's, she's praised to him with her whole emotions, bitterness, crying. And she tells him, this is what I want. I want a son. I need a son. If, and if you will give him to me, I'll give him back to you. And we go on here. It says this, beloved. As she was praying to the Lord, Eli watched her. Seeing her lips moving but hearing no sound, he thought that she'd been drinking. Must you come here drunk, he demanded. Throw away your wine. Can you imagine, here's this woman, and I can see her in my mind, just being so distressed, so sorrowful, to where she's praying to the point where she's crying as she prays. And she's praying so intimately to the Lord that her eyes are probably closed and she's praying out the prayers that are in the depths of her heart in those secret chambers. And the voice is just coming out barely because it's directed only to God to the point where Eli, the priest, thinks that she's drunk. I can just imagine this woman now with her hands clasp so tightly and even to the point of shaking as she pours out to the Lord the bitterness that's coming from her spirit, the bitterness that's coming from her soul. Have you ever been sick in your soul? When you're sick in your soul, I would say it's almost worse than being sick physically because when you're sick in your soul, when you're sick in your spirit, only Jesus can come in and bring true healing, true shalom, where you're lacking and wanting nothing because he gives you a fresh soul healing. That process of soul healing starts by telling it all to the Lord where you're not holding back anything. You're in the presence of God. So let's carry on here, beloved. It says this in verse 15. She says, Hannah says, oh no, sir. I haven't been drinking wine or anything stronger, but I am very discouraged. Are you discouraged, beloved? Have you ever been discouraged, soul sick? She says, I am very discouraged. And I was pouring out my heart to the Lord. I was pouring out my heart to the Lord. Don't think that I'm a wicked woman, for I have been praying out of great anguish and sorrow. 
Verse 17 says this, in that case, Eli said, go in peace. May the God of Israel grant the request you have asked of him. Verse 18, oh, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, she exclaimed. Then she went back and began to eat again, and she was no longer sad. I want to go back and, and, and dissect this, beloved, from the top. We're going to start here again. So Hannah's got this problem. She's barren. She has this rival wife, Penina, who's teasing her. Oh, I can give my husband babies and you can't. I'm fruitful and I can multiply. I am very fertile. And I can imagine that she taunted her day after day harder and harder because their husband, Elkanah, loved Hannah more than he loved Penina. So Hannah gets to the point, I don't know how many years this went on for, but I would imagine that she was barren for a number of years to be that sorrowful. But Hannah gets to a point where she decides that she's going to let go and let God because, hey, you can't make yourself unbarren. Only God can do that. So she goes to the house of God where the man of God is. She goes to that altar and she pours out everything. When you're before God, you can pour out everything. You can trust him. And that's what he wants you to do. That starts the healing process. When you let go and let God, you make that decision in your mind to surrender to God. But you also pour out to him what's in your heart. You pour out to him how it makes you feel that you may have lost that job or how it makes you feel that you're confused about a certain situation, how it makes you feel about what you're going through, how it makes you feel about the future because it's uncertain to you right now. Pour it all out to God. But Hannah goes beyond that. She pours it all out from every depth, from every chamber in her body, from every fiber of her being, from every cell of her makeup. She gives it all to God. She's completely transparent before him. She cries, boo-hoo crying. I can imagine it was an ugly cry. But she lets it all out before God. And then she tells him, what she wants. The word of God says, make your request known unto God. She tells him that she wants a son, but she, in her telling, tells God that if you do this for me, I'm going to do this for you. So she makes a covenant with him that it's not just about me. Make a covenant with the Lord. God, if you bless me with this that I'm asking you for, that I will give you the first fruits. I'll give you the first paycheck that I get from this job. God, if you do X, Y, and Z, tell God how this blessing that he's going to give you or what you're asking for is also going to bless him in return. So she pours all of that out. Her sorrows, her bitterness, her feelings of emptiness, her feelings of inadequacy, her feelings of possibly loss of identity or feeling like she's not a woman because back in those days, it was a really big deal to have children. It was a really big deal if you were barren and couldn't have children. So she bears all of that out and she does it to God to the point where not even the servant of God, not even Eli was hearing what she's saying. Sometimes when we get in predicaments, when we're in certain situations, we want to tell the world. We want to post things on social media. We want to call up 15 friends and complain and tell them all about what's going on instead of running to God, the one who can truly do something about your situation. I'm guilty of that too. I've done that also. But here's a woman who knows better and perhaps before she was complaining, maybe she was complaining to, uh, to her husband, to Elkanah, as Rachel once complained to her husband Jacob and he said, am I God? Can I give you children? Only God can do that. So Hannah goes to God and she pours everything out instead of telling everybody else who cannot help her. That's not to say that you can't have a confidant, that you can't have someone who God has assigned to you or someone who you trust that you share these feelings with, that you share the thoughts and the anguish with. But we must be careful of complaining to man who can't help us. We must be careful of complaining in general. I was listening to a minister recently and he said that when we complain, it's like worshiping the devil. We're giving him an open door to come in. So we go on here. So Hannah, she pours out all to God. She tells God what she's feeling. She tells God what she desires. 
And then here she makes a covenant with God. She tells him how it's also going to bless him in return. So when you're releasing everything to God, it is imperative that you tell him everything that you're feeling. I've had times, beloved, where I did not. I held everything in. I kept everything bottled up or I started telling some people about it. I'm very private, but I opened up to some people about it, but I never shared anything with God. How much of a disrespect is that? You really have to look at your relationship with God and say, do I really have intimacy with God? Do I really trust him as my father? Because if I did, then I would share everything with him. He already knows, but he wants you to come to him. As you're letting go and letting God, he wants you to release all that you're feeling and release your desires to him because that shows that you acknowledge him and it shows that you trust him. And also it's a part of the healing process. It's a part of the paradigm shift. God already knows what you're going through. He already knows what you feel. He already knows what you want. But as you go to him, this is helping your soul. There's something about crying in the presence of God. There's something about releasing what you're feeling in the presence of God that brings about a healing or starts the healing process for you. And when you go, dump it all out. The Holy Spirit will tell you if it's going to be a long or short process. It may take you 30 minutes to get in the presence of God and to dump out everything. It may take you a couple of hours. It may even be a two-day process. But dump it all out before God. Some of you, you may even be in a situation where it's just, it's too much for you. You can't verbalize it. In that case, write it all out. Take out a notebook, get your pen and start writing everything to God. What you feel, what you felt in the past, what you desire, what you're afraid of. You can trust God to be a keeper of your secrets. You can trust God to be a keeper of your feeling. And as you do that, let's see what happens here next. As Hannah poured out... As she released it to God. Eli came as a messenger of God. And he told her basically, go your way then. It's going to be okay. Now that you've gone through this process of pouring it out to God. It's going to be okay. And she accepted that. So the, the purpose, one of the main purposes of pouring it out before God is to stay in that place of fellowship with God where you know that you can trust him. And then also for healing and, and restoration for yourself. You know, I mentioned last week that I was listening to an old uh, series uh, entitled Faith from Lester Summerall. And one of the things that he said was faith is really belief, believing in something. And he went on to say, faith is trust. That's what it boils down to. When you have faith, you trust. So as you pour it all out to God, you're trusting him, number one, with your secrets, with how you feel and what you desire. But you're also trusting him to take care of you. And take care of the situation that you're facing, whether it's a problem or a decision that you need to make. You're trusting him to do it for you. Once you release that to God, once you give him your faith and your trust, your belief, then a healing can start. A paradigm shift happens because you've released it and you've put it to bed so that you can now move forward into the next phase of the process of letting go and letting God get it all out. And once you get it all out, then you bury it because the word says here that after she had done this and she told Eli that she wasn't drunk, Eli told her that she can now go in peace when you pour it out before God, God pours back peace into you. He gives you the peace of Jesus Christ, that reassurance that he's there for you and with you. So you can move forward, but you have to get to a point where you dump it. You let it stay there. There's a, a passage that I like in, in the Old Testament where after Moses dies and Joshua is appointed as a leader over Israel, 
some time goes by and Joshua is still mourning the death of Moses. And it gets to a point where God says to him, Moses is dead, Joshua. Now we have to move on. You have to get to that point with the Lord where as you're pouring it out, you finally release it and have that paradigm shift of, okay, now I've grieved. Now I poured it out before the Lord. So I was able to deal with it. I was able to release it. So now I have clarity. Now my soul is healed. Now my spirit is back with God, one with God where it should be. So now I can begin to move forward and go forward in peace. And when you go forward in peace, this happens. It says that she went back and began to eat again and she was no longer sad. So you get back to your routine, your routine, you get back to your life. You continue to move on with your life, still trusting God to handle the situation, even though you've said that you're letting go. You still continue to live life. You still continue to trust God. And we're going to talk about the process some next week. But as you let go, you receive that peace of Jesus because you pour it out and you've truly let go. You've truly surrendered it all to him. You receive that peace upon you. Now you can go forward into your life. You can continue doing the things that you're supposed to be doing in this season while you're letting God work things out. Go forward in peace and let God work it out for you. Go forward in peace. Go forward in peace. You know, beloved, again, this is not always an easy process. I wish that I could say every single time that something came up, I always ran directly to God and poured it all out to God. I have not done that. I have not lived in perfect faith. But God is merciful and he's just and he wants to help you. He wants to help all of us. It's a daily process of surrender. It's a daily process of pouring it out. It's a daily process of letting go and letting God. It's a daily process. You have to trust that your God in heaven is able and will provide the thing that's best for you. He knows what's best for you. You have to trust that. I'm going to pray for you today, beloved, and then we're going to wrap for today. So please go ahead and close your eyes with me, bow your head, and let's go to the Father. Lord, I thank you that you are an awesome God. I thank you that you are an amazing God. I thank you that you're truly Abba. You're truly a father to us. I thank you that you sit high and you look low and you're concerned about every problem that my brother is facing. You're concerned about every situation that my sister is facing and you will not leave them, oh God, you are with them. God, I ask you today to touch the heart of my brother, touch the heart of my sister, oh God, to desire to come into your presence and truly surrender all to you, to truly let go and pour it all out to you, God. Open the chambers of their hearts. Let them see you as a confidant. Let them see you as Abba, as Father. Let them see you as protector, as provider. Let them see you. Lord God is El Elyon, the Most High God, but also the God who loves and cares for them intimately and deeply. Let them pour it all out to you, O God. And as they begin to pour it all out to you, God, restore them. Restore them. Heal their soul, O God. Heal their hearts, God. Heal their spirits, O God. Restore them and give them peace. As Hannah received peace when she came to you and poured out, let them receive peace and hold their hand, O Holy Spirit, as you continue to move them along the journey of letting go and letting God. Father, I ask you to meet every need and every desire for everyone under the sound of my voice today. Every need, let it be met. Every God, the desire that they have, O Lord, let it be met and cause your good and perfect will to be established in their life for you have a plan for them. Your plan is for good and not for evil. Your plan is for them to have hope and not despair. Your plan is for them to be loved and not rejected. Your plan is for them to be prosperous and not broken. Your plan is for them to be shalom, to be whole, lacking and wanting for nothing, O God. 
and I thank you that your plan shall come the full manifestation over the life of my brother and my sister. I thank you for it, Lord, in the matchless and mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen, beloved. I pray that this program has been a blessing to you today. I pray that the Lord has really quickened your spirit. You know, sometimes you may say, well, I don't know what to pray. I, I just, I don't know how to go before the Lord and, and pour it all out. And I'm not really a good writer. One of the things that I would recommend is picking up the book of Psalms and reading the words of David and just reciting them until they become your own. You all know that I love King David. I absolutely love him. I love his transparency. I love that he was vulnerable before the Lord. I love that he saw God as number one, the person that he would turn to no matter what. I love that he was quick to repent and ask the Lord for help. So pick up the book of, uh, pick up your Bible and pick up the book of Psalms today and begin to read it out and let these words become your own and then start sharing God, sharing with God what else is in your heart. Like Psalm 69, it says this, save me, O God, for the waters are come in upon my soul. I sink in deep mire where there is no standing. I am coming to deep waters where the floods overflow me. I am weary of my crying. My throat is dried. Mine eyes fail while I wait for my God. They that hate me without a cause are more than the hairs on my head. Mm. They that would destroy me, being my enemies wrongfully, are mighty. And it says this, Then I restored that which I took not away. David begins like Hannah did, pouring it all out, the anguish, the distress. But it always comes back to at the end, how God is going to help them. It always comes back to that peace, like David said here, that then I restored that which I took not away. And I know we're getting ready here to wrap up, but I just wanted to read this again concerning Hannah that she says, it says here at the end, she says, oh, thank you, sir. Thank God. Say, thank you, God. Oh, thank you, God. Because it says here, then she went back and began to eat again. And she was no longer sad. So make sure that you get back to that place with God. Because he will refresh you if you seek him. He will refresh you if you come into his presence and pour it all out. He will be there. Thanks again, beloved, for connecting with me here today. God loves you. He really loves you so much. I will see you again next time. Bye for now.